engine oil is far more complicated than I think I would like to admit, but it's something that I think every car owner should know at least a little about, so let's break it down. The first and hopefully most obvious thing that you should know is where it goes and what it does. Well, hopefully the answer is obvious to you, but if not, well, it goes here in your oil fill cap. Unless you're doing an oil change, generally speaking, you shouldn't need to put any more in, although it's worth knowing where it is and what you should be putting in it so that if you do need to top it up, which can happen from time to time, you're well prepared for that situation. As for what it's for, again, hopefully that is obvious as well, but the most obvious answer is it's for lubrication. For all of the sliding and spinning metal inside your engine, all of that needs to have a thin film of oil on it so that it's not just metal scraping on metal. As your pistons fly up and down, as your crankshaft and camshafts spin around, all of those stay nice and lubricated and in good condition, easily spinning round or moving about thanks to your oil. But that's not all. The less commonly spoken about uh, sort of features of your oil are that it cools and cleans your engine as well. From the cooling side of things, in particular your pistons, the big lumps of metal that ride up and downwards taking the brunt of the explosions on top of them, those don't have any active cooling. They don't have coolant running through them like your engine block does. So your engine has what are often called oil squirters, uh, just little pipes that funnel or shoot oil up onto the backside of the piston and wick heat away from that very hot surface, that very hot big lump of metal. That heat can then drop down and depending on what type of engine you have, you might have a dedicated oil cooler where your engine will pump the oil into a little radiator to help cool it down. You'll often have transmission oil coolers as well, although it's important to note that transmission oil and engine oil are normally two very different things. On top of that, your oil is designed to clean your engine. It's designed to pick up any of the tiny little bits of you know, single atoms of metal that get you know, scraped off just over time, get worn away, or the little bits of, of soot and debris from the combustion process as well. All of that gets captured in the oil instead of it getting captured in your, say, bearing surfaces and ripping them all to shreds. So that's where it goes and what it does, but when you walk into any you know, car parts, auto parts shop, you'll notice that there's like a hundred different options for your different oils. They all have slight differences in their labeling. Some are labeled with things like 5W30 or 5W40, 10W30, 10W40, 0W30, W40, whatever. What does all of that mean? Well, those numbers, the ones that I just quoted, are the oil's weight, its thickness, and specifically its thickness when cold and when warm. The first number, so the 5W, 10W, 0W, that is its cold temperature, or uh, its cold weight. So when the oil is cold, it is a 5 weight or a, a 10 weight oil. And the second number, the say 40, 30, whatever, that is its warm weight. So when it's hot, when it's well, warm, it's going to be a, a 20 weight, a 30 weight, a 40 weight oil. And the higher the number, the thicker the oil is. Now, that's actually a little counterintuitive because generally speaking, when you heat liquids up, especially sort of thick, well, oil, goopy, syrupy liquids, they tend to thin out, not get thicker, at least until you've you know, cooked them. Uh, and so it's, it's a bit counterintuitive, but essentially your oil has additives that are uh, long chains that when cold curl up into little balls and so can move around quite freely, and therefore the oil is a little bit looser, runnier if you like. But then when they get warm, they expand and unfold, and so they then have uh, a lot more sort of strength and uh, sort of gel together better and therefore is a thicker oil instead. The reason that you want a thinner oil at lower temperatures is that your engine is almost always made of metal and metal contracts, shrinks when it's cold. 
That means that when you do a cold start on your engine, all of those sort of bearing surfaces, all of the, you know, even your, your cylinders and your pistons are all shrunk ever so slightly. All of the tolerances are a little bit tighter. Everything has to work just a bit harder to get moving, to, you know, move around. And so you want a thinner oil to be able to push its way into those smaller gaps and still lubricate all of those, uh, you know, necessary surfaces. But when the engine gets hot, all of those gaps expand, everything gets a little bit looser, and so you then want a thicker oil so that you can still build pressure and maintain all of that oil in those spaces. It won't just, you know, fling itself out, it will sort of goop in place if you like, and give a, a good surface to be able to, you know, glide around on. Which oil weight your car needs is often listed either in your owner's manual or is normally just a, a single Google search away. It's worth noting though that depending on where you live, the weight of the oil might change. For example, here in the UK, you might find that 5W30 or 5W40 is a pretty common oil weight to find, but in colder climates, you might have more like a 0W20 or 0W30 or 40. But in warmer climates, you might find that 10W30 or 40 or even 15W40 or whatever might be more common. Which weight of oil you use isn't a hard and fast rule. And especially if you're in a, you know, a sort of dire situation, you can't, you really need to top up, uh, you know, you're running super low, you're gonna be damaging your engine fully if you don't top up, and you only have, I don't know, a 10W40 when you would normally have a 0W40 in the engine, it's worth still putting the 10W40 in to get you to somewhere where you can do a full change, but as a general rule, it's sort of, well, best to follow the recommendations. Now, I mentioned additives earlier and the, the sort of viscosity modifier, the long chains that curl up into balls. That is part of what's often called the additive package and makes up about 20% of your oil, with the other 80% being the, the base stock, the base oil, which is itself either, generally speaking, made of mineral oil or synthetic, or what's often called semi-synthetic, which is a mix of the two. Mineral oil is just refined sort of crude petroleum. It is a pure, taken from the ground and then refined, and that's it. Whereas a synthetic oil is one that is man-made, it is custom designed, and therefore is often a more pure oil. It's generally cleaner and generally more sort of high-tech and advanced, with the only catch being that it's often more expensive, and some older and sort of cheaper cars are still often designed to run on the mineral oil, which is generally a cheaper option. And so if your car, you know, prefers or recommends mineral oil or even semi-synthetic, instead of fully, then feel free to go with the, the cheaper options instead. As for the additive pack, that's made up of a load of different sort of chemicals that all have uh, or provide extra features, if you like. Uh, you have the things like the viscosity and pressure modifiers I mentioned earlier, but you also have things like detergents to help keep your engine clean. You'll have friction modifiers to help all of your engine parts sort of move more freely. You'll have oxidation inhibitors to effectively increase the lifespan of your oil and anti-foaming agents to make sure that your oil doesn't foam up when it's being pumped through your engine at high pressure. Those additives, along with the base oil, uh, often are formulated in a way to meet specific standards. Uh, there are a number of different sort of standard bodies, if you like, uh, and a couple of different types. Here in Europe, you'll generally find the ACEA standards and standards from the manufacturers themselves. ACEA has a few different ones that, well, you should know about. The, the main ones are A for petrol, B for diesel, and C for vehicles fitted with particulate filters or with uh, catalytic converters which is essentially all of them these days. So generally speaking, a C uh, class or spec oil is mostly what you're probably looking for. Uh, the number, uh, you'll find those uh, specs listed with numbers next to them. Those are the sort of uh, generation or revision. So you might find A3 slash B3 or A3 slash B4, C3, C4, even uh, I think newer C5 is out as well. 
So those are the different sort of generalized standards, but the manufacturers themselves often have their own standards, generally speaking, based on those ACA ones, and they're often overlapping, but you'll find people like VW or the, the VAG group have a set of standards that are sort of called 500.00 or uh, that sort of class, so 502.00, 505.01, 507, there's a load of different ones. BMW have what they call long life, so long life 01, 04, I think they also have some new ones like uh, Long Life 14 Plus and Long Life 17 FE. I don't know why they're adopting the iPhone model of naming for oil standards, but yeah. And also Ford have their own. Uh, they are horrendous, so I'll just stick a couple on the screen and you can uh, have a read of them. But uh, yeah. Most manufacturers do have their own standards for their own engines, uh, especially if they are the engine manufacturer rather than buying it from someone else. And uh, like I said, they're mostly based on those ACEA standards or very similar to each other. Okay, so you know what spec oil you need. So you can walk into the, the shop and be confident in your decision of which oil is right for... Oh, there's like... There's like 20 different manufacturers or brands of all selling the same weight and spec. Which one of those do you buy? Well, that's kind of, it can be complicated. It can also be quite simple. If you don't really care too much, if you don't have a, a particularly high performance engine and you're not one of the um, very, very vocal oil snobs, then generally speaking, as with most uh, car garages, you can pretty much pick anything that meets the standard and kind of call it a day. Now, I realize that that statement is probably going to upset quite a few people, so let me clarify. If you do have a, a high performance engine, one that is particularly uh, sort of difficult with things like oil consumption, or you are particularly caring of your car and you want to make sure that it has the, the best life possible, then there are potentially some differences between the brands. In theory, if an oil meets the correct weight and spec, so things like if you have a, a BMW and you you know your engine requires a long life 14 plus oil, and you're buying an oil that is listed at the right weight and a, 40, a long life 14 plus oil, then you should be fine. But the different brands often have slightly different formulations of those additives, and can often add extra features on top of the required ones in the, the spec, as it were. Things like a brand like Liqui Moly, a one that I uh, personally relatively like and use myself, offer things like molybdenum-based oils or uh, oils with molybdenum disulfide additive, which is a great sort of uh, low friction modifier. That is uh, something you might want to look out for compared to, say, a, a Castrol Edge that might not have that as, a, as an added feature. Some engines can also be relatively picky. Uh, I've heard some stories of engines where people have you know, used one brand of oil, uh, had terrible oil consumption, as in the oil is actively being burned during combustion, which is a bad thing, you, you don't want that. Uh, and then they've swapped to a different brand, the same weight, the same spec, but with a you know, different brand name, different formulation, and that oil consumption has just gone away. Now, that is sort of rumor mill story, so take that with a well, a pretty, uh, an entire bag of salt, but, you know, if you are particular about it, then do your research, see what other people recommend, and pick whatever is, uh, looks best to you. The final thing to mention is the service life of your oil. A number of brands sell specific versions, and even BMW's long life spec, uh, often quote as having a uh, extended service life. Now, in theory, that means that you can, you can use extended oil change intervals to effectively just not replace the oil as often, but it can be a bit of a bad idea, especially if you care a lot about the car and you want to make sure that it lasts for as long as possible. In theory, uh, the long life oils do have, say, added detergents and added uh, additives that should last longer, 
but your oil degrades over time. Your uh, oil gets acidic from the, the combustion process and the, the excess gases and, and particulates, uh, any unburnt fuel, especially if you have a direct injected engine, that can also uh, make that process a little bit uh, sort of faster if you like. Uh, and also it just gets actively dirty. There's a reason why when you see people doing oil changes and they're pouring in the nice clean golden oil and then they're taking the old oil out and it's black, that's because your oil, despite your filter's best efforts, is covered or saturated with dirt and debris and, and soot and particulates. And so you want to remove that so that your engine doesn't just get clogged with that and none of that starts damaging the bearing surfaces as well. As a very generalized sweeping rule, most manufacturers recommend an oil change once a year or every 10,000 miles. Some manufacturers are now pushing for like 15 or 20,000 miles, which I would personally recommend against if you want to make sure that your car is going to last you a long time. And if you are really particular, you can do it more regularly as well. Some engines in particular do prefer more regular changes depending on how they're sort of set up. So I'll leave that one to you as well. So with that said, hopefully that is a at least somewhat understandable look at oil uh, in a, a general capacity. You know, even if you're not doing an oil change yourself, just so that you have enough knowledge to be able to walk into your local like Halfords or whatever and pick up at least somewhat the right oil, just have a, a one liter spare in your boot in case you start to have a leak, you start to have some oil consumption and you can top it up just to get you home, get you know the, the car checked out, that kind of thing. Uh, and hopefully again, it's useful information to, to have. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to let me know both in the comments and also if I missed anything, feel free to let me know down there too. You can also check out that subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me and you can also check out some more videos on the end cards as well. I have plenty to choose from, including more videos explaining car stuff like tires and tire pressures. If you want to check those out, feel free. And yeah, if you want to support the channel, you can pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one or a few other uh, sort of shades and colors. Uh, and there's also some other options uh, for supporting the channel, things like Amazon affiliate links, if you want to check those out as well. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.